Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, sir. Yes. My brother Bill Bellamy. Yes. The man who refuses to age. I'm just staying <laughs> stuck at 32. <laughs> everybody call me the Black Vampire. You vegan or something? I, yeah, no, I eat, I eat everything. Okay. No, no. I'm like, I just had a pork sandwich. No, I'm just kidding. No, but I eat healthy. I All eat right. healthy. I work out tremendously, and uh, I'm always laughing. So that take half the stress out. That's a You're fact. You're always laughing. You know, I'm That's always laughing. Like, I, I don't take life too serious, unless it's a real issue, but for the most part, I'm having fun. So I, that'll keep that keep, keep 20 years right off you right there. Just laugh. Or, See, that's why you look good. You 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 let it roll off. Yeah, I laugh I laugh, I laugh, laugh too much. <laughs> I laugh at things I shouldn't be laughing at. But some, <laughs> hey, man, let me tell you something, man. I'm with you. Especially when it come to laughter, man. This Instagram stuff. Sometimes I be, I'm nervous to do anything wrong, bro. I realized yes. that. Like I seen a dude get knocked out the other day, and I posted it. And Instagram gave me a warning, saying, you know, they was like fall back, Ooh. fall back with the bully. And then I was like, yo, yeah, they, they don't see how funny this knockout is. <laughs> like they ain't got a sense of humor. They did start doing that on Instagram. Yo, the, the, the knockout the was the crazy. Lines. Somebody remixed it and had the dude flipping to the left and to the right. I, I literally, bro, I was laughing yesterday so hard because it caught me off guard. Like, it, 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 it who are these people on Instagram? I think I really, this is my, my true opinion, I really think that's a whole other planet we'd be looking at on Instagram. It ain't even us. I don't run into those type of people. I never and see I don't see that kind of in stuff real in real life. Never. So how do they get music to it and then they cut it? <laughs> <laughs> that, like, I remember when uh, Wendy Williams fainted. She was just hit the ground and they had a remix. They yeah. had a, Two minutes later. Like, like I, I'm afraid to make a mistake, bro. I swear, like, if I fall down the stairs, I know somebody going like somebody gonna remix me by the time I get the scab off my head or whatever. So I'm, anyway, now let's start from right. the beginning. A lot of yes. people don't know Bill Bellamy. He's been he, he's done a lot in this industry. Yes, I have. Now let's start from the beginning. How, How did long your you career been? Yeah, because he's long. He was a VJ at first. Yeah, MTV, I was VJ. Yeah, yeah so I, I was doing stand up. Right, originally from Newark. I'm originally from Newark, New Jersey. Brick, Brick City, City was mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. I was doing stand up here in the city, mm -hmm. and Tracy Jordan from. MTV, she was a talent uh, scout mm -hmm. and talent relations person, saw me mm -hmm. and she was like, you're a really funny kid. Do you like music? Because I, I work for MTV. I didn't even have MTV in my neighborhood because mm -hmm. MTV wasn't everywhere. Right. So I was like, I thought she was lying. I was like, what? MTV? MTV? I heard about it. She was like, here's my car. Call me because I want to give you like an on-air audition. So I was like, oh, wow. I ain't had no manager, so I had my man call. I was like, yo, act like you my manager and see if this chick pick up the phone. She picked up the phone. I was like, oh! <laughs> so case in point, I get the audition, and next thing you know, I'm on TV. But what people don't realize is was before that happened, my career happened like it was like a one-two punch. So I'm I'm doing comedy. I get Def Jam. Mm -hmm. So I'm I, I I take my Def Jam. So it's just imagine I tape Def Jam in December, mm -hmm. right? It airs in January, and then I'm on MTV in March. Oh, you did so, Def Jam before? MTV? Yeah, I taped it oh, wow. when it aired, like boom, boom. Right. So to everybody, it was like, yo, Bill Bellamy blew up. But it was just the timing of everything. So right. I went from being a funny like comedian where everybody just knew my one joke. Mm -hmm. They didn't even know my name. People did not know my name. They was like, yo, you my man to do the car joke. Yo, Ralph Bellamy, yo. <laughs> oh, yes, my man, Ralph Bellamy. And then when I went to MTV, because every day I said, yo, this is Bill Bellamy. This is Bill Bellamy. So no one ever called me just Bill. They was like, yo, that's Bill Bellamy. Gotcha. You see what I'm saying? So then when I got on MTV, that just changed my life because mm -hmm. MTV at that time was what YouTube and, and social Instagram, media is, all that shit. is yeah. today. Right. So like for me... Because this is why I thought about I got to do a book because most people don't know how connected I am to everyone's success, mm -hmm. especially in the music business. You know what I'm saying? Me, talk like, to me. Like, 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 like Puff. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. me and Puff go all the way back. Like, I remember when Puff, like, this is crazy. When Puff was hanging out bad, he was he was giving out bad boy t-shirts. Mm -hmm. He just got his big deal. Mm -hmm. We was all like, coming up together, right? Mm -hmm. So he's, he's like DJing. He's hustling his bad boy stuff. He got the street team. Mm -hmm. Next thing I know, he went from Puff to Puff Daddy to Diddy to Boom Boom Pow. Mm -hmm. You know, Jay-Z, when he first came out, he had to get on MTV to blow up. Mm -hmm. right. So me and Jay is out in Aspen. He's like, yo, we the only black dudes out here. i like, I no, because mm -hmm. I was doing stuff that black people wasn't seeing on TV. I was going places and interviewing everybody that was coming up in the game. And and you would go platinum. Like, literally, you could go 
you could be a new artist and get on MTV and, and you'll, you just launch. That's right. how powerful it was at that time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when when Pac got out of jail, I got the interview. You know, when uh, uh, Snoop's first album, I'm right there. Right. I'm right there in Jimmy Iovine's office listening to the entire album with Dr. Dre. So I was just like, I got to do a book because these stories and in, 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 in like interesting parts of the music business, I think people will be bugging because it'll never go back to that. Right. What made you leave the music? Because you were so successful. You were the black guy that did all oh, the hip hop yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, that's, and that's so wild to think. When you think about MTV, you think about Fab Five Freddy, yeah. you think about Sway, you even think about Ed Lover. I don't ever put you in that mix, but you were right there. I was yeah, right, right there. there. But, but see, the thing was, the difference between Fab, Fab was like, Fab would be like a senior. I came in as a freshman, mm-hmm. right? So Fab Five Freddy, he was he was like the originator of the culture on MTV, right? Mm-hmm. And then then you had Dr. Dre and Ed Lover, right? Mm-hmm. And they had- um, Yo MTV Raps. Yo MTV Raps. Raps. But right. see, I was MTV Jams. So MTV Jams was like a hybrid mm-hmm. of everything that they was doing, but then also pop. So Added I, the white. So it. they were black and yeah, white. Yeah, we was black and white. So I had the white artists. I had Babyface. Then I turned around. And I had Collective Soul. Then mm-hmm. I turned around. So if you was if you was pop, mm-hmm. you was on Jams, and that was what was dope because then a kid like Usher could just go from you know a goal to. Diamond, mm-hmm. because now the white kids is going crazy. They got to get it. They got to have it. Like MTV deems you a success when you're on there, right? Mm-hmm. So we do an interview. It, it was you, to your benefit as a new artist, like for us to come on your show, because right now your show has the pulse of the culture. Mm-hmm. And y'all y'all don't care. Y'all do everything. You know what I mean? You. What I like about this show is you guys, you you, you are topical and you're not just stuck to music. You do everything. Mm-hmm. That's, what, that's, that's why I feel the show has such a great audience because there's something for everybody. Mm-hmm. And I think when I what I was trying to do with MTV was I was trying to blow my people up, mm-hmm. period. Mm-hmm. Like, I wanted you to win. I'm like, dog, we out here. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When Will Smith did his first big movie, Independence Day, he was with me mm-hmm. right there. Yo, I'm about to blow up. I'm mm-hmm. like, I, I see it. You got a spaceship. They ain't never seen a brother. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it was just moments in my mind. Right. You know, even like we were talking outside with like little Kim. Mm-hmm. You know, you guys, you, you gave her a shout out. What I, what I love about you know, little Kim was, she was, her and Foxy were pioneering at that time, the brat, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? She was the first artist to go platinum. First female right? rapper to go platinum, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I was a part solo of female rapper. first solo, right. Yeah. So you're right, he's absolutely You remember right. in that telephone. Uh, AJ's coming back to that. Yeah. <laughs> you remember them cue cards. <laughs> like, that was on the cue cards. <laughs> but, uh, you know, th- I'm so happy for those ladies because, you know, when I look back, I was like, no, they was outside the box, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like Cardi B right now is outside the box for the new generation right, right. now. Mm-hmm. But they, if you go back, when you go back to Little Kim, one of her lines that's to this day is absolutely bananas to me. I used to be scared yeah. of the dick. Rep the bell, pump the I'm like, no, who say says it. that? Yeah, say I, can't, it. I can't, I can't, I can't. You already started. I wanted to. <laughs> I'm like, even to this day. I, even said, bubba, 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 I'm like, don't be scared, don't be scared. So why did you leave the MTV? Because you were doing it so well and you were so Yeah, you know, I wanted to, 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 be a movie star. I didn't want to just be a, a music guy. And and what was so crazy was that you know I was interviewing everybody. I remember saying this. I was like, man, I want to. I want people to interview me. And I was like, I was interviewing everybody. Kurt Cobain. You know, I mean, Dr. Dre. I was at Dr. Dre's studio the day after he had uh, drove his Ferrari like a hundred miles. Like it's in the movie. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. Yeah. He could. He the first dude I ever seen with an ankle bracelet on. Mm-hmm. In my life, like wow. I didn't know and you from real. Newark, but I mean I ain't never seen nobody with it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's blinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yo, they really monitoring this dude. <laughs> like, if he go too far to the gate, ding, 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 gotta go back to you know. Mm-hmm. So anyway, um, I I wanted to make movies, so I just, what I did was I started with, um, I did um, Dre and Ed's movie, uh, which was Who's the Man, Who's the just man? a little cameo. Remember, there was a bunch of hip hop people in that one. That was my taste. I was like, yo, I kind of like this movie thing. We need and, to, I want to remake that. Yeah, wasn't that a Absolutely. fun movie? Yeah. It was cameos for days. Hilarious. Oh my God. Charlie really? Mack, hurry up. Charlie Mack! Yeah, Charlie Mack. And, uh, <laughs> Charlie Mack, Charlie Mack! <laughs> Got to shout out Charlie Mack. And, um, and then I did Love Jones. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm like, yo, man, this is like kind of fly, you know, doing movies. And then I did How to Be a Player. And then I was like, you know what? That and was that it. was the one. Those are classic. I right am uh, really going to do this movie yeah, thing. Yeah, How to mm-hmm. Be a Player is a classic yeah, movie. Yeah, it's classic. just one of those movies that I just love and everybody to this day <laughs> still talk about. How'd that come about? Was that 
Russell, from Russell, MTV? Russell was like, you're handsome, you, 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 you're charismatic, I think this will be a fabulous movie for you to launch your career. You, you, you're, you're fantastic on MTV, but I want to make you a movie star. <laughs> and that's boom. So and he that produced it. it. Def Jam produced it. Yeah, that was Def Jam movie and uh, Island Pictures. Yeah. Did that ruin you in real life? Did women really think he was a player? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There he, he go with that. Was, he probably was. Oh uh, yeah, then. but I was, but not like to the like people think <laughs> like, <laughs> like like literally like I was, but not like that. Like right. if you see my movie, I ain't even wash up. I was like, yo, I'm nasty. Like if you watch the movie, <laughs> I just be leaving chicks' house. I don't yeah, even wash yeah, yeah. my hands. Nothing. <laughs> I'm like, yo, I ain't even you know little nothing. I'm I'm like, yo, I was wild, and I had like seven chicks in a day. Uh. That's a lot, you know. Yeah, he was doing too much. So I, just, like, I, was, I was doing I was too much. That I was part. right. That was way too much. So, but in real life, it was interesting. What I learned from doing movies is when you do a role that people like gravitate to, they think that's really you. Mm -hmm. Like, like, like when I was in Love Jones, people didn't like me for about about a year. <laughs> I was like, I was just playing. Like that was in the script. I was just Chicks was like, yo, no, nah, you really dirty like that. How you gonna do Lorenz Tate like that? You supposed <laughs> to be his man. <laughs> and I was like, yo, that's the role. It's not like build a real right. guy, you know. But I, I mean, I, I, I'm scared. Like when I got this new movie, mm -hmm. and it's called the. Uh, the Great Illusion is different. Like I'm playing, I'm like real serious, and I'm playing this uh, FBI guy who's uh, on a case, and this is a big, because there's a huge problem in this country with sex, sex trafficking and human Absolutely. trafficking. Mm -hmm. It's like more than it's on the news. It's, mm -hmm. it's really scary. So we're tracking this guy down, and it's gonna be interesting to see people see me when I'm not laughing. Mm -hmm. You know, because I'm always happy and stuff. But even my kids, they just be like, "Daddy, you too serious when I when I'm not playing." How but did you I, get into character for that then? Since you're, that's not how you really are. What did you have to do? Well, you know, you you have to. In most most of my roles, there's something about it that is personal. You know, I take like a personal thing and I just I gravitate to that energy of what the person out mm -hmm. feeling is, and then I drop that in there. You know what I mean? And this was like. If this was my kid, what would I do? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, I, what, what would I do? How right. hard would I work to try to solve a case to get somebody off the street like that? And I just put that personal energy into it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not laughing. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you I see mean, what I'm saying? That's tough because I see your daughter just turned 16 too. So even wow. thinking Lord about that. Lord have mercy. Yo, I want to give you a shout out. First of all, <laughs> DJ Envy, I never told him this. First of all, this is my man. You the only dude that really made me like. I should have had more kids. You ever see how many kids he got? <laughs> I love it. I got like, five. like, yo, you I like got it. the real family, though. Like, man. I got two and I tapped out. Man, I but it. I mean, you be got you got a dick, 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 dick. Like, <laughs> like they like they go in sizes. Like I'm like, yo, who does that, yo? I'm like, maybe. And then y'all do the cute outfits. I be like, yo, I should have had three more though. <laughs> Why'd you tap it? out? I I got scared, bro. Cause I not really no. I just. I was just good. I was got my girl. I got my son, and I was like, good. Like I didn't even think about it. Like, oh my god, three more. So you started wearing condoms then? You, no, 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 no. <laughs> not doing none of that. I, that's ridiculous. I'm saying I'm not having no more kids. And when I see this dude, I'd be like, yo, another daughter or son could be cool. Could so what you cool. waiting on? You... I'm not doing it now. <laughs> Why? <laughs> the gap. It's ridiculous. His he gap is ridiculous. No, Your daughter, it's not. his daughter's sixteen. Sixteen. My daughter's seventeen. My daughter's oh, 17. seventeen, and my youngest is two. Yeah, see, that's right. So there's a window for me? But, see, but, but, see, was, it, was it planned or you was just no, no, about to watch machine? They're trying to have one. I'm an only child. So for me, I didn't have the big family in so the house So you all the wanted time. it. So now it's like, it's so good to see that this one running here, this one doing football, swimming. How do you do it? Just because I... You yo, take I'm, your dick out, you I'm, put it in a vagina, <laughs> you pump a few times. And don't get out. And don't pull Stay out. Stay in there. Stay just in there just put your elbows up. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to have more. So. I want one more. I want one more. I want six. I want to make it even. Oh, you going again? I want one more. Man, you are super <laughs> so fertile. You can do it too. <laughs> Yo, I, that's when you know your nuts good. Like when you what? good, you you know what I'm saying? Super like that's firm. when like you super like like that's a fertile man. That's a oh, healthy okay. man. Like he know ain't gonna be no problem, babe. If I look at you, it's a wrap. Ain't a healthy woman. Ain't this healthy, healthy wifey? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's most people don't realize how hard it is to have a kid. Right. Like you know, very hard. Mm -hmm. Most people be like, I live in L. A. You know, you be hearing the struggles of people talking about. Oh my God. We paid thirty thousand to spend the sperm, and we were playing one stand on one knee, and you know the gods will bless us. And then him, he have a baby, blink, yeah, blink, <laughs> blink. <laughs> he just go to work, go home. He got a baby. Absolutely. <laughs> you don't have? Do you have any kids? At three. So you good? Yeah. Nine. Nine. What you waiting on? I don't know. I've never tried to get pregnant. 
I've always tried not to. You always try. You scared. You kick it. Get off. <laughs> 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 she kicking you in your chest. You ain't gonna do that. <laughs> what did you do with it? But maybe, what maybe. You well, well, you just would one, be a one. really good mommy. I know everybody says that. Could you have like a warm energy about you? You, I think you would. That would be good for her, wouldn't it? It's I been interesting because so. I've been running around with my goddaughter all week, and she isn't stayed, it. She isn't it with fun me, though? But she's grown now. But I've known her since she was born, so I used to babysit her all the time. So you ready? But I'm also like because I don't have kids, I spoil other people's kids too much, and I don't know if I'd be. You, I have no discipline. You listen, listen. Look, look, look talk to him. He <laughs> see, we got this. This goes in grades of like five going on six, three and two. We can help you. Okay. <laughs> First of all, you got to You just got to stop pushing dudes off of you. You know, you, you got to hold his back and just say, "Stay there." <laughs> All right. <laughs> now I'm pregnant. That's how it works. It's a timing thing, so you know when you can't. There's certain times when you know you can't get pregnant. How do people? This is this is the this is the thing that gives. They got tribute. an app for that now. Yeah, yeah. they got an app. But listen, <laughs> when you young, like say you you know you're in your 18, 19, 20, you ever notice like people just get pregnant by accident, like real quick, right? Mm -hmm. Do you really know it's only a couple days? How do you know get that them days? Mm -hmm. And he done hit the days five times a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But people yeah. also, you can go and find out when you're most fertile, and you can do, they have a, um, a fertility 13, test. 13 to 15 and days. And you can actually period. find out. This, I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got it down. Yeah. 13 to 12 days right after the period. <laughs> Yesterday, Thumbs up. yesterday was 14, so you know, me and the, that's what I'm tired right now. You're, you know? you're a little winded. Yeah, you're a little, little winded. Little winded little I got winded. a question for you because yes, our daughters is like right at the same place. When you were in the car with your daughter, what was your vibe when she was driving? Because my, my daughter's driving, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to be good. I, I'm nigga, I'm sitting in that car, bro. I'm stressed. But but I'm but my face is regular. Right, right, right. But my hands. There's nothing you can do. Like I'm pressing the brakes sometimes. Break, 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 You can't make her nervous. You can't make her nervous. Right. I try not to, but like, you know what I'm saying? We went on the highway. Did you ever go on the highway with your daughter? Yeah, my daughter drives now. Oh, she good. She good. Her license is good. So my daughter is literally in another three weeks, she's gonna have her full license, right? And Yikes. I'm, I'm dreading. Did she take the test yet or not yet? No, no, no. She's oh, she getting. She's doing the hours. Okay, right? yeah. she's almost done. I did all that. Now I, you I gotta buy her a car. Yeah, did you get her a car? You videotaped the test. Everything, yes. Oh, I just don't know about the highway though. You, how, how old is your kid? Eleven. He got a long and way then to go. Three. Oh, you can and wait. Nine wait. Oh, you. Oh, you got another one. Yes. Yo, you. This is a fertile. It's coming. So anyway, um, <laughs> you're gonna be pregnant. Well, so I, I'm listen, just throwing it out there. When I, I was 17, I crashed like three times in a row after I got my license. Oh my god. No. They used to call me and my best friend. Anxiety, they used to call don't us do Thelma that. and Louise. Because we used to drive so crazy. Oh, no, 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 no. See, I, I, that's why we got Uber for that. But, but you know, if, if, if it's not going good, now we got a backup plan. If, right. you, if you feel like your kid really can't drive, go back to school. You got Uber and stuff like that. But I'm saying, when I was in the car and my daughter drove on that highway. The merge. That merge is Woo! mean. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That merge is mean. I was like, please, Jesus, don't let me trust you. No if you love me, Jesus, please. And it was a car coming out. I was like, dun, 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 dun. like, like it, it, it's just. It's like, oh my God, gas, bro. Gas, 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 it's, it, Wait, it literally is like a movie for every dad. You don't revert back to when you was first driving, though, when you were 16? I don't remember. Like, I don't really He's remember. He's from Newark. He probably stole a car. Yeah. I stole that car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't remember, like, because um, I never took, I don't, I don't know. I think I learned how to drive with my grandparents in the South. Like, I used to go in the South. I think I learned how to drive a pickup truck or something like that on a dirt road, mm -hmm. me and my cousin. Like, they let us drive because you ain't going to hit nothing yeah. right? <laughs> down South. But, oh, like, yeah. but yeah, boom, you hit a uh, possum or something. But, uh, in California, we got so many cars. It's crazy, bro. So it's like I want my daughter no, no Instagram, no phone, like, mm -hmm. like no lock in. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We, you know, we we six and nine on this thing right here. Stay mm -hmm. right here. Get your mirrors together. I'm like sitting Ugh. there. I, I tried to film some of it, but some of them I can't film because I was too scared. You just made me think of something. That's going to be the hardest part for some kids because they're so used to having their phones all the damn time. That's what I'm saying. So how when you're learning to drive, mm -hmm. can you just put your phone away just for a second it, to focus? But it's better mm -hmm. to Everything do that. pop up on the screen now, though. So no, nah, I told my daughter, you don't see that. You just hook you don't it up see that. to you don't the see that. I don't play. care what she said. Because, you know, on the screen now, it'll say, you know, uh, 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 Rihanna or whoever is sending you a message. And I'm like, you don't see that. <laughs> you don't see that. That'll wait. Just look at that road. That's right. But you can talk road. to the car. You could be like, hey, so uh, see, you like to respond? Nope. And then you say nah. yes. <laughs> you ain't built for that yet when you a rookie. Nah, I think right. your whole rookie season, you should be strictly. <laughs> 
Right? Yeah, basically. Because absolutely. Absolutely. listen, man, it's so many times like now when I drive because my daughter's driving, I, when, when she's in a car with me, I'll say, check that out. See that person right there? They they texting while they driving. You ever be driving and you'll see somebody just drifting? Yep. They drifting into your lane. Because they texting on the they phone. They gave me the, f this, this dude gave me the finger. <laughs> Why? He almost hit me. He texting. I'm like, yo, money, bop, 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 bop. You in my lane. He's like, <laughs> 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 we both would have been dead, bro. <laughs> anyway, I got. Can I tell y'all something real quick? And I just want to ask you because I've been thinking about this. Because y'all talk about topical stuff. Are these new straws messing with y'all? I hate them. Oh, I hate them. These cardboard straws. I hate them. Yeah. Have you ever had one in your mouth yet? I hate them. I hate them. It's weird. I hate them. It's just weird, bro. They're trying to keep us from littering, but that should make me want to throw it on the ground. <laughs> it gets soggy, too. It, man, I went to the movies, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I, you know, in the movies, you watching a movie and you let it sit in there too long. And that thing collapsed, yeah, bro. That's a, like a flaccid <laughs> penis. Oh! Like bro, I don't know about a that, what? but it's like a cardboard <laughs> box. Yeah, you know he always go left. I'm like, hey, what happens? The worst. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you oh, think of? I mean, of? that's the, of all the million <laughs> thoughts. You know, all like a weak, a, a weak dick in your mouth. <laughs> what is wrong with Charlamagne? I'll just make sure you How you get this job, bro? <laughs> he said the straw breaks down like a flaccid penis. You got like a flaccid penis in what? your mouth? But listen, no. is it, be, be honest. Isn't it like a flaccid penis? No, it's How like, would he know? I don't know that. What, I know what like it tastes mouth. like. I know what it feels like. It feels like you have... <laughs> what? Uh, you said you know, you know what it tastes like. <laughs> no, no, no. I said I, said, I know what it feels like. <laughs> when you have that, oh, that cardboard straw, don't it seem like a box? Like, you, um... You ever like you never you ever cut up a box? You ever cut up a box after you don't yeah, got yeah, something? Yeah, absolutely. It tastes like what the box would taste like. Like the mm. box if you just had box in your mouth. It's just <laughs> how, po Bill, how poor was you in Newark, bro? <laughs> That's just, you ain't never had a box? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean I eat box, but not that kind not of box. Kind of box. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't Shaq like your how cousin? Poor was you? Yeah, man, man. Everybody didn't have money at first, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We came from something, man. Yeah. Cats was, cats was, cats was eating boxes. Shaq because Shaq made the NBA when he was like 920, man. Yeah. <laughs> he he acted like Shaq was rich when he was little. <laughs> <laughs> it was the same. He had the same money I had. Well, <laughs> None. <laughs> and we was talking about all this fucking. Why did you, did you have a trademark booty call? No. Oh, man. That they was, still that use that to this day. Yo, I heard it. I literally man. heard it on the TV show yesterday. Damn. People use booty call like it just came from them. <laughs> they don't, yeah. from them. They don't they know where it came from. They just use it and don't mm -hmm. even know where it came from. Like yeah. I see, it's always a reference mm -hmm. in a movie or a TV show. And I'm like, yo, it, wh but who was thinking of that in 92? Right. 1992. Did you know, did you know that you were going to be, you know, renovating homes? Did you know that? No. See? <laughs> if you would started that in 92, you know how I many more homes you have right now? What's wrong with you, Ify? <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you have the fourth type? <laughs> I don't know, Bill. <laughs> How many more homes? Think about it. In 1992, right. if you was renovating homes now, you would have half of Brooklyn. You wouldn't be right. here. You wouldn't even yeah, be, here. be here. You'd yeah. be a hologram right here. <laughs> <laughs> How um? How did you come up with that term? Oh, Do you remember the first time oh, yeah, you I, used I remember. It? I literally I remember exactly how I came up with the joke. It was because at the time, Mike Tyson had went to jail. He was in Indiana. And this girl went to his hotel room. Mm -hmm. So I, I read the article, because that's how a lot of jokes come from reading, so I read a lot. And I was like, yo, that is crazy as hell. She went to his room like three in the morning, and she was like, I don't know why I'm up there. I'm like, that's that's crazy. That's crazy. Everybody know what that is. Mm -hmm. So I, my, my roommate at the time, I was like, yo, that ain't nothing but a booty call. He was like, yo, B, you what is that you just said? I said, that's a booty call. Everybody know what it is. I ran to the Uptown that night, mm -hmm. right? Let me show you how God worked. So I, was, I wrote it on a piece of paper. I had it. I used to write everything that I thought of on a, like a napkin. I put mm -hmm. it in my pocket, right? So I shoot over to the city. I go to Harlem. I'm up at Uptown. And that night, everybody was there. It was a bunch of good comics, and I was supposed to go on. They kept putting me last, right? So Charlie Barnett went on that night, and Charlie killed, like, like, I don't know if you ever been to Uptown back in the day. When you killing, they stomp the ground like this. <laughs> they used to they used to stomp the ground. So uh, he killing the spot. I'm like, oh my god, I don't know how I'm gonna follow Charlie Burnett. This is crazy. So Kevin Brown came up to me. He was like, Yo, B man, I I I I'm gonna ask you a favor. Can you can you come back next week? And I'm like, oh, 
come on, man. I've been waiting. I'm like, come on. My car probably gone. I double parked. <laughs> I'm like, yo, bro, I came all the way from Jersey. I got I got a new joint. I got to drop this joint, man. I Just let me go on tonight. I, I ain't going to come back next week. He said, all right, you going to follow Charlie Burnett? I said, yeah, I got it. I got something. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 what I did was I started with my closer because mm-hmm. I knew my closer was a banger. What was your I closer worked, back then? I don't remember. I just knew it was a banger, so yeah. I started. I worked backwards because mm-hmm. he killed it. Right. So I was like, oh, shit, I got to start, baby. I got to start with my closer. Keep that energy going. Keep that energy. Mm-hmm. So I started with my closer. And I threw the booty call, like I did two or three jokes, I had them, and I threw a booty call, and the place exploded. I said, oh! Mm-hmm. Russell Simmons was in there that night. Mm-hmm. That's what's crazy. Had I not went on, HBO was in there. That was the night I got Def Jam. Mm. Wow. And, that's wow. How, and so, so, case in point, I do the joke, everybody's going crazy. Russell runs around the back, he's like, yo, What's that? What, what what's that booty call thing you just did? I want you to do that on my new show. These are my HBO executives, and we are gonna do this thing. We bringing this this vibe to television. That's how I got Def Jam. Wow. wow. So if I if I would have just went home, call. nobody would have mm-hmm. never yeah, happened. But, wow. Is that not crazy? That's nuts. Thank you for reminding me. Boy, bro. <laughs> wow. Now send me you my re- booty call money. You really, <laughs> you really need to write a book, Bill. I, I am. Like, I am. Real, I mean, real. I literally, you know, um, I'm literally in the process of that. I thought about it last month. I've seen a lot of um, really interesting things, you know, especially when I saw uh, Straight Outta Compton. Then I really was inspired when I saw Dr. Dre's uh, um, thing with Jimmy Iovine. Mm-hmm. What was that uh-huh. called? What was that shit called? Oh, it was uh, it was on HBO. Oh, That's what you talking about. It was, it like was a, a series. Yeah, yeah. It was it was you know what I mean. Yeah. But basically, in this music game, which has changed tremendously, but we'll never ever be able to go back to that to that burst of. Success, yeah, the burst of when people were selling millions of records, like, and people were buying them. Remember yeah. this? Remember when you really bought a record? It's really, it really was a black renaissance. Or when you spent a million really dollars was. on a video. Nobody, yo, mm-hmm. I see Chris Brown videos on Instagram now. <laughs> like I used to announce, <laughs> right? Chris Brown is literally the modern day Michael Jackson. Do mm-hmm. we agree? Right yeah. now, I mean, him and Drake, they rented. A, but I never know when a video coming out no more. We used mm-hmm. to be like on point with yeah. that, right? Yo, world we premiere. know today world premiere joint dropping at five o'clock. You ran home, you was like, yo, <laughs> Michael Jackson or whoever got the Jay Z got the new joint. I never forget. The first time I saw Money, Power, Respect. Do you remember Money, Power, Respect? Hell yeah. How the energy of that video? Yep, 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 yep. What you need to lie? I was like, oh! <laughs> I always wait. I always was waiting, waiting for DMX. <laughs> the verse. Mm-hmm. The DMX. I was running through the forest. Running through the forest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come yeah, yeah, on. Yeah, 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 like we yeah, don't yeah. have moments like that. So when I when I think about the book, I want to talk about moments like that. I feel that would resonate with people because I was living it right. mm-hmm. and bugging at the same time. I was telling the guy, uh, that my agent, I was like, my life was kind of like Almost Famous. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So in Almost Famous, it was like a young kid that had to follow this rock band around and write about them and mm-hmm. stuff and then became a part of their world, right? They just threw me in the music business. Mm-hmm. I was a comic two mm-hmm. days ago. Now I'm I'm sitting there with uh, Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown and uh, you know Clive Davis and you know Jimmy Iovine and all these artists. But there's so much intersectionality with all those worlds. Yeah, comedy, yeah, comedy. Hip-hop. You know, co- comics love music. Um, musicians love comedy. Yeah. Like you, this dude was dying laughing when we did the Barclays. Like mm-hmm. yo, yo, you had you made me turn up because like <laughs> he was crying, right? So I'm doing one of my jokes. <laughs> Emmy, <laughs> Emmy is buckled over like this on the side of the thing. I was like, oh my God, I gotta kill Envy. But I love I love comedy. Like, I can tell. Anytime there's I get a, a free moment, me and the wife, we go to a comedy show. Like we love it. Like we just love to laugh. What's wrong with that? Right. Nothing. And it's you come out feeling Nothing. good. Well, make sure you come to Caroline's because be Bill there. Bellamy is no. gonna be at Caroline's. Yes, I will. Thursday, all Friday, weekend. You coming Saturday? through? I'll be there Friday. I'll be there Friday. You heard it. He's coming <laughs> to support. I'll be there Friday. Yeah, absolutely. Th- this is not a kid's show. You let the kids stay home. <laughs> this is grown no, people. Here. I this... brought my daughter one time to, to a Donnell Rowan oh, show. No. Oh, no. And he was like, dig in the ass. Dig in the Oh, boss. no. You know, oh, Donnell, stop. <laughs> Come in here, baby. Come, Come in here. Come on, baby. Close your ears. It must. It must. Did you make, did you make What's the context of that kid? joke? Hmm? What's the context of that joke? I don't know what Donnell was going with. Yeah, I never heard Donnell is wild, but he's so funny. Oh, no, he's hilarious. He's hilarious. Did you make a lot of money back then doing MTV? Yes. He said oh, yes. yes. And BJ's were like the biggest celebrities, especially I, because at MTV they want to wine and dine you and they yeah. want to get that look. A lot of white women. 
it was everything. <laughs> Literally, like, honestly, bro, just to give y'all a quick, like, I have so many plaques from different artists, from, like, Little Kim, Genuine, um, Dre, Snoop, um, who else? Uh, uh, SWV, mm -hmm. all these boys, the men, like, because I was helping them be platinum artists. Right. Like, you couldn't even go platinum without MTV back mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. So I literally, like you said, I was like an ambassador, right? right? So they was whining and dining me. So, Bill, we got the new album. We're sitting there. We got the EPK, <laughs> and we're going to put a lot of money behind these videos, and da-da-da. Even when I interviewed Michael Jackson, that was nuts. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't... I, what did my, you interview him? Was it... Was, was it I did Michael Jackson interview because, if you remember, he won the Video Vanguard Award with his sister for Scream. Right. Then he turned around and dropped History. Mm -hmm. And then um, it was the first time that a video premiered on every network at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I introduced the video. It's, it, I was in Times Square here, whatever, whatever. And what was crazy about Michael Jackson, I'd never seen the machine before. Like, he's he was big. Mm -hmm. Like, it'd be 45 people in here with Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I just came here, me and Terrence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Michael Jackson, got a, he got a DP over there. He got 18,000 security dudes. He got a, 18 managers. It was the highest selling album of all time. Yeah, but like, I never seen a star like that. Like, mm -hmm. where it was such a massive amount of people around him. It made you feel nervous a little right. bit. Mm -hmm. So I remember like, you know how you can ask me anything you want? Mm -hmm. I couldn't do that with Michael Jackson. Oh. They just like, look, mm, let me see. Nah, you can do three, four, and eight. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You had to submit the questions. Yo, yeah, just yeah, yeah, submit yeah. the questions, bro. You ain't asking him nothing stupid. You ain't mm -mm -mm. asking about no monkeys. And, and don't even talk about the monkey. Leave, bo <laughs> Leave, Leave bubbles, bubbles out, out, of out of it. <laughs> but it's Michael Jackson, so you're like, I'm not going to. But I wanted to ask Michael right. Jackson the questions that real people want to know. You know what I'm right saying? Up. They killed all of them. Because I was like, I really wanted to know about bubbles, because, like, real talk. Of <laughs> <laughs> how. You know how big you got to be to have a, a monkey and like nobody say nothing. Just but say, anybody got him now. No, but I'm saying Charlotte. Back then it was a big back deal. Then he was the old back yeah, then yeah, he was yeah. the first dude. You know that, when Tyson had the that, white tiger. No, but he had real clothes on the monkey, bro. No. Think about Bubbles was dressed up like a person, bro. <laughs> if you had a monkey here with you at work now, he and he was dressed it. up with new new gear on, he got on stuff. It, people would be like, "Yo, Charlamagne tripping, bro." <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I think he think he real. <laughs> like they would meme you and stuff. Back then, Michael was outside the box. Nobody nah, had no money. Michael would show up with Webster on his arms at the award show, and, and nobody would care. And the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, you ever seen anything quite like that? No. Think about it. No, no but it was just regular because it was Michael Jackson. So and he like, had a rider. Oh, yeah, he used bubbles. But bubbles you know what, though? Rider. Back then, I used bubbles to like my stars. He had a rider, bro. <laughs> I used to like my stars to be outrageous back then. Like, to the, the be like Prince, Michael. I didn't want you to be regular. But they weren't. Yeah. That that was one of the things that I mean, I'm being honest, like like Prince, the first time I met Prince, right? So I interview you making me think of so many things, but um so remember when Prince did the Emancipation album? Mm -hmm. And this was the time where he he was like, I'm the slave and blah blah blah. Yeah, he was yeah. a symbol. Yep, the yeah. symbol. At the time, yeah. So nobody knew what to call him. He's a, whatever, the man with the symbol thing. Whatever. So I go out to Minneapolis to interview him for the album because this is a, his first it's emancipation. He's getting away from the slave. Independent, thing. yep. Independent, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know he had a regular voice. <laughs> Did not know. He, what do you mean regular? Like? He had a regular voice. Hey, what's like, up, nigga? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I swear to God. Swear to God. I was like, oh. <laughs> I, I thought he'd be like, dearly beloved, um, you are gathered here today. Like, I thought that was his regular voice. That's his singing voice. His regular voice was like a regular dude from Brooklyn. What's up, man? You want to talk about this album? <laughs> but he had boots on, like. Like little high heel boots, like like, yeah, like with a heel heel, like mm -hmm. that, like heel. Like they offer you pancakes? Ah, nah. He was just like, I'll be honest with you, he was just so cool that I was thrown off because mm -hmm. I, I I I had a feeling that he was cool, but I thought he would be more like sort artsy. of artsy, right. you know what I mean, eclectic kind of. He was just a chill ass dude. Like you'd be like, yo, I'm gonna hang out with Prince. You would do but after you met him, you'd be like, yo, that's my man. We gonna play ball? Yeah, and he can hoop. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is crazy. I don't know why you're wearing the boots. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bill Bellamy's going to be at Carolina Yo, this week. thank you, man. Tonight, 7.30. Friday, 7.30, 10 p.m. And Saturday, 7.30, 10 p.m. And, and write book that book, coming. man. Yep. I'm doing the book. Done. Right here on The Breakfast Club. You heard it's going down. Bam. <laughs> Last question. You ever, you ever wanted to invest or have you ever invested in Newark? 
Because you from there. Yes. You had a chance to get in early. I literally, I literally, it's funny you said that. I just did something with the mayor. Ross Baraka. Ross Baraka. Well, yes, Ross. Shout out to Ross Baraka. Man, we had a great time. And I really, I said, you know what? I, I, I got to do it. It's just mm -hmm. nothing to talk about because my city is coming back. And they're putting a lot of money in there, man. Mm -hmm. And I, and what you're doing is absolutely fantastic. It's worth it. Right. It's worth it to be involved and be a part of your legacy, to leave something for your kids, kids, kids. I seen you say that one time. It's, it's important that you're thinking like that now while you're young enough mm -hmm. and you can make to make it happen. I'm trying to, I'm trying to teach our people how to do that young because I wish I'd have had that mind frame. Yeah, me either. When I, I, didn't... First I got When I first got my first dollar. Right. Instead of buying a car at that time, I should have said, you know what, let me buy this. This crib, because that crib would have bought 10 cars. You know what I mean? Easily! Mm -hmm. I got that now, though. I got it. I'm yep. there. So, Nook, we're back, baby. I'm on my way. <laughs> All right. Well, it's The Breakfast Club. It's Bill Bellamy. Yes, sir.